here's your problem. You have an animated character, and you want to make a melee attack, such as swinging a sword or punching. And this could be in 2D or 3D. Our solution here will be in 2D, but the process will be the same for 3D. Here's how to make it work. So we're starting here with a character who has an attack animation. And whenever the sword goes out, we want to detect that it hit something. And we'll want to do that with an area 2D, but we only want it to be active you know, during the frame when the sword is swinging right there, but not after. And so we're going to do that with our animation player so we can make sure that that enabling and disabling of the area will match the frames of the animation. And we can also do that with the second attack here, which has a slightly different pattern. So what we're going to do is, as a child of the sprite, I'm going to add an area 2D. And I'm adding the area 2D as a child of sprite because when we move the sprite, we're using the scale and setting it to negative 1 to reverse direction when we move to the left. So this way, our hitbox for our sword will flip also when we flip the character. And so we're going to add a collision shape to this. And we're going to use a rectangle. And so this is the hitbox for our sword, which is obviously going to need to be a bit smaller. And we can advance the, there we go, we can advance the animation player until we see it where we want it to be, right? And we can see it starts coming out. And maybe we'll pull this back here. Yeah, and so that's the area something will need to be in for the sword to damage it. And then over here on the very first frame, we want to make that this make sure that this collision shape is disabled. And we'll keyframe that. And then we'll advance to the attack frame and turn disabled back off. And we'll keyframe it. Then we'll leave it active until we get to here, and then we'll disable it again. And so now when we play the animation, you can see it get enabled while the sword is going forward. Now we need to connect this up. So I'm going to rename this area 2D to sword hit, and I'm going to connect its area entered signal. And so this is going to go to our player script, which already has the code to do its movement, which I'm not going to go into. You can see a, another one of my tutorials for that. But in our area entered, all we want to do is see if the thing that the sword hit is a hurt box. A hurt box is an area that I can add to any object that will cause it to take damage. And that should be all that we need to do to test out if this sword hit works. And so here's a test scene I set up. There's a barrel here that has a hurt box on it. That's this rectangle right here. And I've turned on visible collision shapes so that we can see them. So you can see when I hit my attack, you can see that sword area becoming active. So if I run over there to the barrel, when I hit it, it does damage and is destroyed. Now the other thing is that our two attacks are a little bit different, right? We've been working on attack two which does that area. But on attack one, attack one starts low and sweeps upwards. So we can see here the area isn't totally covering the sword, and on the upswing it's not covering up here on the sword either. So the way we can fix that is, let me switch back to attack two here, and at the first frame on the collision shape, we're going to keyframe its uh, shape extents. And so we'll create a keyframe for that. And then that way on attack one, we can resize that. So we're going to want it to go taller like this, right? so that that whole area is caught in the sweeping attack. And then so we can keyframe the extents for that as well. And then do the same thing we did with the other one where we started out being disabled, create a track for that, and then when the upswing starts, we'll enable it, keep it enabled until the upswing finishes, and then we'll disable it. And then back to our test scene, we can try this out with both attacks 
there's the one, and then there's the other one. This tutorial is part of my new Godot Recipes website. The goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.